Okay, so in this page, we're gonna talk about how to actually set up a very basic rudimentary basilisk simulation. And this involves having to package these modules we heard about into things called tasks and processes. So what are they? Let's just kind of draw up some modules that we talked about earlier. And we had one module and then we have another module. And uh, so let's say we wanna uh, execute them at 10 Hertz. This means we need to add them to a task or also a task list is one way to think of it. But in code, it's just called create task. And what this task then does is it will stash these modules that we'll be adding later. And uh, I might have called this the dynamics task. And we may want to execute it at 10 Hertz. So that's kind of the thing that we'll be setting up here. All right. So that's one task. That's good. And let's say, we might have another task. Maybe we have to do something with uh, communication. Let's just to change things up. So calm, and we need to run this at five hertz, right? All the items, all the modules that will be added to a task are executed at the same rate. So every tenth of a second, these get updated. Communication, we need to do twi uh, five times a second. And you know, you might have other modules in here, of course, in the future when we actually populate them. But for now, it'll be just empty tasks that we're setting up here. So what happens next? Next, we have to actually now figure out, well, these are there. And to execute them, Basilisk needs to put these into a process. Think of a process essentially as a task group. It's a way to group all of these things together. And you might do it for one spacecraft. You can put all of them together, create a separate process to stash all the tasks and uh, modules for a second spacecraft into a second process. It's an easy way to organize all this stuff. So we will go ahead and draw out a process and give this a label. The process and task is identified by a unique string. It just has to be some name that dynamics process, for example, but you can call it anything. You can call it Fred or Harriet, it doesn't matter. Um, so that's good. Now we have a process a, a container essentially that a, a group that these different tasks can go within. We can do multiple processes. So I'm going to shift this up and let's say under flight software, we might do a flight software process where we also have different tasks that are executing at different rates. And I'm just going to sketch them out. So this might be a 10 Hertz task. This might be five Hertz. This might be two hertz, you know, you have different processes, so you can do it. So that's kind of the idea. That's what this code shows you how to create them, how to get them set up, and then we initialize, execute the simulation uh, on this script. Now, what are some highlights? When you create a process, I've drawn first the dynamics, like I'm creating first the dynamics, then I'll create the flight thought for process. If I don't specify any priority, then these processes are executed by the order that you added them in the simulation their priority number is actually minus one by default. Um, so if you wanted to create dynamics first and then the flight software, but really for some reason you want flight software to go first that process, then you would specify an optional priority task. So let's just write this in. If I would give this a priority of 10 and this other one a priority of five, well, as often the bigger number wins out. So the higher priority will go first. And even though you created the dynamics process first, the Basilisk system will execute the flight software first before it executes the dynamics process. Then within the process, you have tasks. And again, by default, these tasks are executed in the order that you provided them, unless there are prioritized tasks available. So if we just left this one at default, this one we gave a priority of uh, three and this one we get a priority of one just to kind of mix things up. So even though we created this one first, but we didn't specify a default. In fact, what it actually does is by the, under the hood, it gives it a priority of minus one. That way the system knows there's no priority set for this. But what's gonna happen when it gets executed is this task here has the highest priority. It was created second, but it's gonna be executed first. And the next highest priority task is gonna be this. And then finally, of course, this one will be executed. That assumes all of them are being evaluated at that particular moment in time. 
So this is a two hertz, a five hertz, and a 10 hertz. So you know, every tenth of a second, you have complete syncing where all three tasks are being evaluated. And in that case, it matters. If you only, you know, if this is every fifth of a second, then uh, this point, this, so this is here, we have every half a second, two hertz. This is every 0.2 seconds, and this is every 0.1 seconds. So if you had 0.5 seconds, this last task wouldn't be evaluated, but you would evaluate this one and this one. And that's where the prioritization comes in. So anyway, this is a quick introduction on how these prioritizations work and how you can create multiple processes. It's groupings of tasks, and of course tasks, that's the key, the tasks you need to specify update rates.